Toy Tractor Times is here at the 2019 National Farm Toy Show and we're taking a look at the display contest today and we have three friends that have worked together to build a very nice looking Iowa farm that we're going to take a tour of and the detail and work they put in this display has earned them the first place trophy in the youth division and why don't I have each of you introduce yourself, tell us your age and where you're from. I'm Dawson, I'm 13 and I'm from Monticello, Iowa. I'm Dylan, I'm 12 and I'm from Monticello, Iowa. I'm Keegan, I'm 11 and I am from Monticello, Iowa. Well thank you for bringing this uh, display out and what, how did you guys decide to work together to, to build this? So like it was cheaper if we all stuck in it. We all have different pieces that we enjoy and have in our collection so we wanted to come together with all our good looking pieces and make a huge farm. Well, I wanted to make an Easter Iowa farm because we all live in Eastern Iowa and kind of make a farm kind of like around us just to have. Well I've had a chance to film on your guys farm for uh, big tractor power and it, it looks just like it so uh, why don't we take a tour here and um, tell, tell me what's going on with the different equipment in the buildings where do you want to start in the shop all right so here in the shop we got a case axle flow 7088 uh, has a corn head on it they're getting ready for harvest and then right there we got a white 4210 that's the toy farmer model and that's pulling the unperverse grain cart. Getting big ready avalanche. for harvest. Very nice. It's a big cart. So, so right here, they're fixing the camera on the auger for dumping on the go and they're combining. Okay. And then over here, we got all the seed totes for in spring. They already got their corn pre ordered and their soybeans. And then right here is just the duels for all the farm's tractors. They all. All tractors on the farm have duels but one in case it's a wet fall or spring. And then over here's all the shop details like toolboxes, air compressor, bench, all the tools, and a broken Rochester wind vane. So as we move towards the road here, we got a mailbox and some signs. That's a tractor crossing sign since there's a, this is a big farm and they would be moving a lot of heavy equipment on the road. Sure, with the mailbox and... and... Then right here, it's a combination of our last names, the sign. We wanted to incorporate that into what could someday become a real farm. You got the zero turn mower there? Yep. So right here, there's an address sign and that's just to show more detail in case of a fire if you needed to call 911. And then the speed limit sign. And right here we got the pigs. We got, got logos on all these pig feeders and waters. So what brand of pig feeder are they? Isn't it? Packs. Packs, okay. That looks like you're getting a, a Coon uh, Night Mixer coming in here too? Yep, that's brand new from the dealer. We just traded in the real Augie and traded it in for the twin screw coon knife. Very nice. Yeah, I know they those get run a lot every day so that they wear out yep, pretty twice quickly. twice a day every day. Oh, over here he's grinding feed to put in the pig feeders and got a hog mover sitting there behind the tree. You can see the corn coming out. You got the Archway mixer. What model of Oliver's here? That's a 1800. Oliver okay. 1800. And I know you guys on your farm run a lot of Oliver and White farm equipment and as we move back uh, we've got the modern day version evolving from White which is the Challenger. What model Challenger is that? Pretty sure. MT228 maybe I think. Mean. Probably I guess it's a MT675E or, and you've got the 12 row Kinsey planter back there. Yep that they would be cleaning that up for an older neighbor who needs help and cannot fully clean it up and put it away for the winter. So they're just helping their neighbor out. That's good. We've got the grain bins here for the farm. Yep, they got fans, vents, and the short unload augers for extra detail. Then right here we got a fertilizer tow with a transfer pump which would be used when they spray the cover crop after it's planted. Okay. Dry. And it looks like maybe you've got the drill over here for putting the rye in. 
Yep, they're loading it up. They just got to take, they'll take their call to mulch out after their chisel. Okay. And they'll call to mulch it and then they'll sew their eye down. Chop it and spray. And what model of white tractor is here on the? 145. Uh, okay. Yeah, white workhorse 145. That, that was the end of the, the field boss design with a really nice decal on it. And it looks like they've got some beef cattle. Yep. yep. These would be the stock cows, cow calf. We've got a John Deere skid steer uh, filling up a New Holland 195 um, spreader. Yep. yep. And then another field boss. What model is uh, pulling the spreader here? A white 2105. We actually have a 270, so thank you, Jason, for letting us use that manure spreader. Oh. It's a good match. Absolutely. Got a good setup. I'd also like to thank you for using the Kinsey 12 row corn Well, you guys have a good good work and I, I really have enjoyed seeing this display. So we've got inside the barn, you want to tell me about what's happening here? So this would be the working corral where they would load out their fat steers or wean the calves off the cow calf bears. Okay, so over here we can see the, um, the old style Augie uh, mixer on the Oliver 2255 and the cows are there so they can feed on either feed into either side of the building here. Yep. Got the doors. So we can go out to our pasture now where there's custom made spot and rose bunks. You can see you've got the water in the pond here. Yep. So now with these bunks, are they, is that filled from the tractor and the mixture each day yep. or do you have to hand fill them? Or? Yeah, every day the tractor will come out with the ration just made for the stock cows and okay. feed it to them. It's a different ration than the steers. So then um, I will look over here in a minute and see the forage harvesting operation, but it looks like they're chisel plowing here with a yeah. magnum. Yeah, they got a case 380 magnum. Just corn stocks. Well, that'll definitely get the job done pretty well. It's a powerful tractor. So right here we got a Ford flatbed pulling a, well, we have a Pride of the Prairie, and it looks just like that except it's a double cradle. Okay. Bale trailer. They slide the bales on, and then you can dump them off on the side. So we've got the uh, New Holland skits here, here picking up the bales. Yep, he's picking up the bales and he'll stab into them and then lift them up high enough and push the other bales on the trailer ahead and then drop it down and back up. Now here's a tractor I like. It's a two-wheel drive New Holland T6000 series. Yep, T6030. And you've got the New Holland Roll Belt Baler. And how'd you choose this setup? We had the baler and we just put the extra details mm -hmm. on it, so... We decided just to go with that baler, and I think it turned out good. It does, and you have an excellent uh, New Holland dealer here with Heli Farm Equipment in Dyersville. So next we can go over to our chopping scene, where he's chopping into these 1250 forage wagons. These are custom built by Dawson. They're just New Holland wagons painted, and one didn't turn out as well, so we just painted it red and turned it into a Meyer. Uh, another so, popular brand and I, I just wanted to look back here at the FR and the, the chopping and you guys have the Badger 1250s on yeah. your wagon which yeah. just appeared on Big Tractor Power YouTube with the automatic hitches yeah. and uh, really neat that you were able to recreate the wagons and we can see our FR series chopper here filling the wagons and it definitely um, doesn't take too long to do that. That took like probably close to 24 hours in total for the whole corn. Wow, and how many uh, toothpicks do you have out here? <clears throat> There's at least 1,500. There's oh. not a definite count, but it's at least 1,500. It's a lot of poking in there. Yeah. And it's uh, Your fingers start to Yes. I bet there's probably about 200 corn stalks here. Yeah, there's actually 230. Wow, very good job. Thank you. As we move over to the bag pit, we got some up north bags. We got the logos on them. What kind of bag is it? Up north. Up north, okay. And how did you uh, how did you make the bags? So we basically there's foam inside of here and shaped it to look like a bag. And this is actual ag bag plastic. Okay. Which is glued on, and you have taped on the logos. 
Very nice. Tied a bun, like wrapped it. I know people always ask me about the bags, what happens to the plastic afterwards, so now we know you've recycled some. To... Yeah. Okay, so next we're over here at the calves. These are just orphan calves that have either been abandoned or have not, their mothers wouldn't accept them. And over in the corner they have the kids 4-H heifers. Okay. That's a nice detail. Just going back to the bags real quick, so you actually have an ag bagger. Yep. We're wrapping up the silage coming off the Meyer wagon. Uh, 1468 yep. on that. 15? 15. 15. Very nice. And then looks like another white 205 field boss. Yep. The front the farm wheel assist. really likes them, so they got two That's a nice, there were only 250 of those front wheel assists made by the toy tractor time, so that's a, that's a nice one to have on display. Thank so you. now we come over to well, my favorite thing to see in a farm always is the equipment shed here. So what, what do we have tucked in here? Uh, we got a park wagon, we got a Kenworth semi, a um, fertilizer cart, we got a Wilson grain trailer, and uh, livestock. Okay. Parker gravity wagon, yeah. John Deere 550 mulch master, <laughs> Kinsey 3600 planter. Yep, that would be the farm's planter. Got the John Deere silo blower. Yep. Mm -hmm. So they still fill in their silo too sometimes? Yeah, they put their cover crop rye in that. All okay. the rye goes up in the silo to the wood. Yes. And then uh, what model of field boss do we have here on the brilliant cultimal tree? That's a white 185. Okay. That's probably by far my favorite part of the display. Yeah. And it's Very pulling, nice. yeah, brilliant cultimal tree. And here is the farm's junk pile, because every farm has a junk pile. You never know when you might need something out of there. And it looks like an H&S rake back here. Yep, that's a Holy Farm Equipment H&S rake okay. with some new tires. Looks like maybe some hydraulic lines added yep. to it. All the machinery has PTOs if needed and hydraulic lines. So, we've had a nice tour. I'd like each of you guys to tell me what is what is your favorite, uh, Keegan, what's your favorite piece My on favorite here? My favorite piece is right the shop and the, oh. all the detail you put into that. Dawson, what was your favorite part of it? My favorite part's the white 185 and the cold culture. Um, my favorite part was the different breeds of short horn cows and the monoslope. Was it hard to find all the cows or did you have to work They're a little just while? All around the show. Okay. Well guys, congratulations on taking the gold trophy. Thanks. There's a lot of we kind of pan around a lot of competition of people that bring their displays and it is um, your efforts together really paid off to Take that trophy. So you think you'll come back again? Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Well, thank you very much. And thank you to everyone for watching Toy Tractor Times YouTube. If you'd like to learn more about displays and building, check out Toy Tractor Times Toy Talk, where thousands of collectors join together to share the work that they're doing. And as always, thank you for watching Toy Tractor Times YouTube.